Hey guys, it's Carol, and thank you for stopping by for my floss tube update. It's the middle of June 2024, and I've managed to get some decent progress done over the last two weeks. I'm going to start first with a almost surprise finish for me, and this is my Dimensions Needlepoint Kit Butterfly on Zinnia. Here's where it was last time. And this is my completed project. You will note, uh, first of all, I haven't taken it off the stretcher bars yet, but secondly, I there's a ton of backstitching on this. All of the flowers are supposed to be backstitched. I just couldn't, I didn't. This project is cute. I've had a lot of fun with it and it was really fast considering I started this in September. It's June, got it done. Once I got the butterfly with the back stitching, I was like, this looks great. And I didn't, all the back stitching was supposed to be done in black. And I didn't actually want to do that with, I love these lovely soft pinks. And I just, I was like, okay, I'm going to do the butterfly and I like how it looks. So I was like, I'm done. There it is. Um, I was originally going to send this back to my sister and had that conversation with her and she does not want it back, which is okay. I am totally fine with that. And I have figured out that I am gonna just find a cheap little five by five frame and put this with all my gardening stuff, but that means it's gonna in the garage. So that's where I was the other reason. I was like, I don't need to spend hours upon hours back stitching something that I wasn't really feeling. Like I said, I love how this turned out. It was a lot of fun. Like I said, needlepoint. It's when I'm in the mood, I'm in the mood. And when I'm not, it's, you know, not my thing, but this one was really easy. Like I said, uh, starting in September, it's on a 14 count uh, mesh canvas and it's all done in continental stitch. You can see, um, I didn't, there was probably enough that if there were spots that really were asking for basket weave, I could have done that, but I didn't, this was fine as it was. But yeah, it's done. So this puts me up to three finishes for the year already. So yay. The project I picked up after my last video first was this. It is Pear and Rosemary. It's a French kitchen collection from Summer House Stitchworks. And I had a very teeny tiny start last time you saw it. Here's where it was. And we're still in teeny tiny start land. I did finish, so this valence, that's what it's labeled at the top. I went ahead and finished that up and these are the beginning of some of the pears. I'm gonna say like the leaves. There's a bowl right here. I don't know, but you can see, it's a very small project, not very wide at all. I think it's really cute. Um, this I think marks about a quarter of the way down. So yeah, I mean, you can imagine how it's gonna fit in. I basically finished the valence and then I put it down. So there's not a lot to say on this. Um, it is being stitched one over two on a 36 count Blackbird's Nest. And I don't know, I, I'm happy with it. I will say that this color here, which snow something or another, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, does not pop very much against the fabric, but I knew that going in and was pretty okay with it. It doesn't really stand out that much on the photo on the uh, pattern cover anyway, so it's good, but yeah, not a lot to say here. The project that got the most time spent over the last two weeks, like basically from the video almost every day, has been Mirabilia Designs, Winter Queen. Here's where she was last time. So the worst part about me showing her is I feel like there's not as much done as the time that I spent stitching on it. So maybe a month or so ago, I had finished out a skein of white, picked up another one that I was convinced was white. Like I checked it with all my lighting inside. That was probably mistake number one. You can go ahead and guess, I'll just spoiler alert, turned out to be 5,200. Anyway, so I, everything that I had shown you knew that was white on my last floss tube, staring at, and finally I was like, it doesn't match. Went outside at like noon, sunny day, not a cloud in the sky, like you were gonna be able to tell the color difference. It was dingy for B5200, but I in fact had done this and all of this like right here, a bunch over here, a little bit in here, yep. It was the wrong way. So I spent a lot of time 
pulling white back out. And I have restitched pretty much all of it except for like a little bit right there. Um, and then gotten a little more. So this, which before had only come to about here, the white actually comes all the way down to where my finger is. I just don't know how well it's showing up. But this is like, I don't know. I spent a lot of time on the white, so I feel kind of bad, like there should be more. I also did finish the beads up here on her hair. This is completely done. The back of the crown, and now I just really need to start over. Um, what I'm finding with on this particular project, the beading needle, like I'm going from basically right to left is the easiest way. So I just hadn't done that yet, but this is filling in nicely. I love, really love the look of the satin. Like this pattern is just, it's so much fun. So I've been having trouble putting it down, but that's maybe like the best kind of problem to have. Um, yeah, not a lot to say. I'm just gonna keep working on it. You'll note I'm kind of like preferencing over here for some reason. I don't know why, but every time I try to work over here, oh, like this white, this is all new to. I thought I'd be like, okay, I wanna fill in. No, for whatever reason, I like really am just feeling drawn to this side right now. So I'm going with it. There's, it's cross stitching, there's no rules. I'm enjoying it. And I do love, I never already said this before. I love the beading on this. So the, there's, I think, petite glass beads in C, there's two different types of mill hills in here and the smaller ones, because when I realized how many beads were like gonna be budding up next to each other, I'm used to being like, oh, that's gonna be a jumbly mess. No, like the ones that are this, these silver beads are like just the perfect size. They fit so nicely on the 32 count. So, I don't know, I'm really happy with this. So as you note, this is the one that obviously I've been spending a lot of time with. I really find myself wanting to pick it up and stitch it, so, Everything else that I'm gonna be showing you is kind of done is the, oh, I need a little bit of a breather after working on this, which is fine, because like I said, I'm happy, I'm getting stuff done, but this one's definitely like, it's my focus piece, and I love it. What should be my focus piece, and kind of sadly isn't, is my Dimension Stocking Kit Snow Bears, and here's where I was last time. And this is my progress, okay. I was thinking, man, I haven't done a lot, but okay, this is the bottom of the name part, which I'm doing last. Like, I'm gonna call this done before I even deal with up here, cause I need to figure out which child this is going to. But in the meantime, little bitty start of a cardinal. Most of these trees are done with the exception of like right through here. There's more snow bits to put through, but trees, they're doing pretty well. And if you can see, we have like a third of the one bear's head. So that's his ear, so cute. Um, it stitches up really fast. Like this one is so, like I think actually the hardest part is that it goes so quickly that I feel a little bad like that I'm, I think that's why I feel bad that I am not like closer to done. But then I turn and look and say, uh, the heel is right here. Like I'm already, I'm ready to go this way. It's coming together so nicely and I just, I don't know, I have like nothing but good things to say about these stocking kits. So um, if you enjoy that sort of thing, like highly recommend, it's just a basic one from Dimensions. I ordered this one from 123 Stitch. My next project is Modern Folk Embroideries, The Fruit of Plenty. Here's where it was last time. And I've pretty much made the halfway point. Okay, if I'm gonna be very picky, there is like my darker color needs a line here and a little bit of my lighter color, but you know what? I'm calling this like halfway done. I realized my last video, I sounded kind of grumbly talking about this project. And I guess I actually wanted to say it was the, the day I was filming it, I was just frustrated with it because I really had been hoping to make like more, like getting to that halfway point before the last video, which that was two weeks ago. Um, and I just hadn't, I didn't want to buckle down with it because I felt like it was pulling me away from it. I really wanted to be stitching on. So I 
thought about it some is like, okay, I'm gonna get to the halfway point and then I'm basically putting it in timeout for two weeks. So I reached the halfway point about 10 days ago. I will pick this up before July, but I was like, by me doing that, it basically gave me permission to say, hey, I have a very small goal that's honestly pretty, I mean, there wasn't a lot. It was finishing this. This is not particularly dense stitching. It goes together, like most of it, once I had this part, it was just filling in. It was mindless. I didn't even have to look at the chart. It was just taking the time to do it and not feeling like I was a problem for having the feelings where I'm like, why am I just not further with this? So all of that to say, doesn't it look great? First off, like this looks amazing. I am so happy to hit the halfway point like that. And it's only June. Like I really have not been focusing on this piece this year. So I am incredibly happy with how well this has been coming along. And the being willing to put it in time out for a bit has been really helpful. I haven't even pulled out the July card. It's still like, I don't even know where I have it packed. It's with the rest of them, but I haven't felt the need to like hold this as a project that ought to get done or should be done or all of those other almost external pieces that then you use as an internal voice to beat yourself up with. And I really shouldn't do that, but I totally do. Um, yeah, I know I just, that's a little bit of my internal dialogue that I will have with myself regarding some of these projects. And the problem is when I get stuck in that kind of place, I often will take that feeling I have of frustration with me and I'll put it on the project and the projects, the projects never deserve that. If there's a true, like if I really hated this project, I would UFO it today and call it good. I am getting a lot better at that. You'll note I don't have UFOs right now because some of them I have just said, hey, if I can't bring myself to work on it, then this is a plan and it's easier that way. Now, obviously, again, I don't say I'm a UFO. I love this project. But giving myself a little bit of permission to say, hey, we need to take a breather, work on something else, and then come back to it has been just so relieving and yes you can point out this is hobby i shouldn't have that problem but i have found that this is how i treat the things that i enjoy in my life i've been doing this my entire life it's honestly part and parcel with my anxiety whatever i don't really like talk about that much i don't even really like to think about it much but i know why i do these things and sometimes it's easier for me to just confront it and say oh that's what's going on but in the meantime, like I said, halfway point. It looks fantastic. I also, the other thing I realized is I, for some reason, kind of enjoy working on this side more than this side. I'm not entirely certain why, um, but something I am excited about, and I didn't start it, but the uh, 2024 Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along that I said I was gonna start, again, said I didn't, but I haven't. The way it's laid out is it's 10 equal parts, but it goes, it's like strips across the top. And I'm really excited to try that as opposed to these chunks where this is six pages. Um, just because I do stitch really a page at a time. So I'm thinking that this might be like one of those just trying something different because I think it is something about when I get over here, I'm like, oh, I'm ready to be, I'm not done. I think that is the feeling. Whereas if, if I get over to the page here, because I know I'm going over to the next one, it's a little more loosey goosey and I just don't feel like there's less expectations that I'm heaping on myself. I hope that makes sense. And if not, that's okay too. Speaking of projects that I am not UFOing because I just said I don't have anything right now that I feel like would be a UFO, but Ink Circles Tapestry, and I started this one in early 2019, so it's one of my oldest projects, it's five years old. Here's where it was last time. And this is my current status. So I had put this down, having done all this center with these flowers, so you can see it here. Then I was like, um, so stitching this one is a pure mandala has been less than thrilling for me. I think it was, well I'd said before, I think it was I got caught in colors that I wasn't enjoying. And so I'm trying something a little different now, which is I'm basically gonna fill this up to here. Um, I just had enough, because of the hoop I was working in, when I had enough 
of this, like any of these colors left over. I was coming down and working over here, but then I finished this one. So I'm just kind of, like I said, I think I'm gonna finish like this top section and I basically pulled it out just because I wanted some more colors and it's not a huge amount, but it was like a change of pace. And I don't know, it's when I work on it, I like it, but it's the one that from the, like, I keep all my whips in my project bags and the project bags all live in a cubby. And I only have the nice part because Amazon shipped this in a bunch of 24. I pretty much maxing myself out too. I cannot have more than 24 project bags because I refuse to buy more. That's really like what it comes down to. And when I'm like flipping through them, this one just never seems to leap out into my hands unless I make a concerted effort on it. But then when I'm working on it, I'm like, oh, this one looks so good and it's, it is a fun stitch. So I think the key for me to like make progress with this is just kind of accept that I'm not going to have some beautiful like center, like this is not a Chatelaine. I don't have any, like it's symmetrical across eight axes. So the north, south, east, west are cardinal directions, but also on the diagonals to say to a certain extent, you're like stitching the same thing over and over. You'll know like this right here. Well, it's probably more obvious this and this, and this, and this, and there's another one right here and here, like they're the exact same motif and the exact same colors. Like there's nothing, by the way, repetition is a great thing. I think it's part of what actually makes this entire piece work, but recognizing that if I sit here and like force myself to work on it in that way that I am not going to enjoy it and it's not particularly circular, so I'm like, I had actually started running to the way that some of these motifs line up. There's not a good circular, like this middle part, this diamond, if you will, worked out really great, but everything around it doesn't really like lend itself to that. So that's why I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just do this top. Maybe I'll do the entire top, I don't know. But for now, I'm like just filling this section in and see where it goes from there. But I am gonna try to make a little more effort just because, again, this is one of my older ones and I have so many new projects that, I don't need to get stuck with always waiting for the shiny new thing and then leaving something that I bought. I didn't even buy the fabric. The pattern I bought at one LNS, I bought the fabric at another. Like over the period of a couple of years, I really made the intention to, or had the intentional choice that I wanted to work on this. So then once I started it, not getting stuck on again on, ooh, there's something else shiny and new. Like I want to kind of, I don't know, really make some good progress. I don't expect to finish it this year, but I would like to finish it next year. So I'm gonna set myself up well, where that's easy and achievable. And the last project I pulled out, this uh, was my work this weekend, is the Busilla Kit Summer Symphony. Here's what it was last time. And this is my progress. So, the trees, like, okay, over here, I had said at some point, like, with these colors, it's terracotta and clay, and it's very, it felt fall at the time, which is great. So these greens, all of a sudden are like, it's summer, that's what it feels like to me. So the, from the vantage point of the viewer, you have this, like, tree in front of you, between you and the house, so you have all these, like, leaves that are gonna be dangling along the top. So this is the first time I'd gotten to that, like, Actually, so it is fully complete. I even finished out the window. I need to do some back stitching, but otherwise this section right here, so we'll say what, like a sixth of the piece is 100% done. And a lot of these colors start duplicating down here. So I have been coming back and working and filling this in and like some of the house. I don't know. I have just really, I don't know, it, maybe it's the, it's the right project for this time of year, but I have really enjoyed this. It's also kind of nice. It's on a 14 count Ada. So when I don't, after I'm done working on like a 32 or 36 count, coming back to this has been just super nice and easy, particularly in the evenings. I'm trying to do something where I use like less screen time at night, more stitching. Um, the problem is my eyes are usually tired at that point. And even with like my, even with my glasses, I'm like, uh, I'm struggling a little bit. I need, it's not like bad. It's just one of those, I'm like, hey, 
unless I want to like really like crazy light up my stitching space, which by the way, for me at 9.30 at night, I do not want that kind of light because I'm trying to honestly bring myself down so I can go to bed. Um, so this has been like that kind of project where it's great to have this list of my Q-snap, most of my other stuff goes in a hoop. So, and because of where it is right now, it's like, I just been living it in the Q snap and it's just been, I don't know. There's something nice about working on, like I said, an Ada project because you can see it. And I don't know, it's great. I love it. I love this point. I love everything about it. I think I say that every time, but this is such a fun kit. I, I just love the art and I don't know. There's basically we're going to get to roof line here, so maybe next time. I've not really been one for like saying plans. Um, right now, most of what you're going to see is actually pretty much what you've seen in this video. I don't have a, I did not do a specific rotation for June um, just because it seemed easier that way for me. But I kind of want to like, these are the ones that have pulled out there right now I want to see like some good progress on. I have a couple of other like projects that are sitting by and I, every time I pick them up, I put them back down. So I have eight project bags in my stitching space. All the rest of them are put aside for now. It works out okay, but like I said, it's the, whatever I think I'm gonna work on, if I have like the world's best plans, it's not what I do. I don't know why, because, well, they, okay, the real problem is, left up to me, my real plans are to literally cross stitch everything and I would magically get all of my projects done in like two days so that I can do the next humongous project and get it magically done in two days. Like I am the queen of magical thinking when it comes to cross stitch and that's okay. So my point is whatever I say that I'm gonna work on today, like I can basically tell you what I'm gonna work on today and tomorrow and everything after that is kind of like, uh, maybe. So that's okay. Like that's, I don't know, for right now, that's feeling good. Um, I hope that you enjoyed seeing my progress. I know that I love seeing everybody's cross stitch. Like that's, the, oh, I don't do a lot of social media because I honestly don't find it fruitful. Let's go back to the anxiety thing. But one of the things that I do find incredibly enjoyable is seeing people's cross stitch, both in progress and finished. Like all of it, I love all of it. Like that's, that is something that brings me joy. So. I hope that you feel the same way. I mean, I'm hoping so. You're here watching a cross stitching video. And with that, thank you so much for giving me your time. I appreciate it deeply. So my stitching plans for the rest of June involve, honestly, it's gonna be a lot of snow bears just because I really wanna have it like super close to a finish. I'm gonna start the next stocking on July 1st, no matter where I am on snow bears. I have actually pulled one out and been like, should I start now? And I'm like, no, I'm gonna get a little, like I'm giving myself the two months. So if I have this one should theoretically be mostly done by the end of June, that gives me two months to do the next stocking. Where I said, as long as I have everything done by Halloween, I can get them to stockings before Christmas. But that means I do need to buckle down and do that. And one of the things is I do know that I will run into burnout. So trying to avoid that. I am playing very like loosey goosey with my planned anything right now because it's most right now it's in service of keeping the motivation going for the projects that I need to finish. But on the plus side, having one finish already done is like awesome. So right now, I mean, I remember you up to three. I only ever got three projects done. Did I get three full ones done last year? Or did I only get two? I don't know, I might already be more productive than I was for all of last year. So anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate your time and all of the great comments that people leave. I read them all. Not always the best part of responding, but I do read them all. So I do appreciate everybody who takes the time to reach out, subscribe, all of the standard YouTube things. You guys have heard it before, but if you do like my content and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Anyway, with that, I will see you next time. Bye.